first service. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
ready to uh, begin our worship this morning. Um, the only announcement, I guess, regarding COVID is things are as they've been the past several weeks. We must uh, keep our mask on at all times. Uh, we can remove our mask if we're a single reader or, and not this morning, but in some cases, single uh, uh, singer. Uh, if you've had uh, tea or coffee in the safety of your own seat, you're allowed to remove your mask, of course, to eat or drink. And when we come around to you with the Holy Communion, uh, the bread to host, and of course you'll be allowed to remove your mask if you wish to, uh, to, receive, the, uh, to receive communion. But other than that, things are as they are. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number one. Jesus Christ, our time of worship and celebration. It is really good to be able to get together for these few moments to be as a church, as brothers and sisters, to worship God together. I'd like to welcome those who are joining us online. It is really good to have you with us this morning, wherever you may be too. This morning our worship is uh, developed and produced and uh, written by the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. That's our worldwide uh, uh, outreach program on behalf of the Anglican Church of Canada, which we're all proudly to be a part of. And today, the service that they have produced uh, involves uh, the whole thing of the season of creation. In particular, they're looking at it from a justice and equality issue of uh, food and uh, food equality for all and the pressure that the uh, global warming is having on food supplies and production around the world. Uh, this morning, also just a couple of things to kind of keep you up to date on. We're still working away at the uh, roof problem with our church, in particular this side. And so we're working away at that, and it looks like we have some quotes come in. So we'll let you know as Vestry makes decisions, but it could be very likely we may not be able to get that done to fall. and may have to wait till spring, so bits of shingles all over the place out there. So we'll see how, uh, we'll see how all that goes. Hopefully so it'll hold together for the winter months. 
Uh, downstairs, we also need some work done. Our floor in the hall needs uh, some uh, stripping of wax and waxing. So we're looking at uh, getting some volunteers together to help with that. Uh, probably a Friday night and Saturday. So look, probably a couple of teams of people, uh, probably three people to help strip the floor, and then a couple of people over the weekend to come in for an hour or so to, to put some wax on because it hasn't been done in a while, especially with COVID, with the daycare down there needs to be done, but also as a possibility of uh, renting again on the weekend. And right now we don't feel we could offer anybody the space without having the, uh, having the floor done. And so uh, we do need that looked after. Uh, we have a person now who's willing to look after the cleaning uh, for the small fee that's included in the rent for the cleanup after the rentals, but the floor does need to be done. So if you're interested or able to help out on a given weekend, just a Friday night or a Saturday or even a Sunday morning or when we do some wax, or Sunday afternoon some waxing, please let us know. Also this morning, we're gonna try something we used to do regularly here at our church. Uh, this short notice, but we figure right now advertising might be difficult in the time of COVID. But after our service, uh, some of us are going to uh, go up to uh, uh, Chessa's on Kemet Road for breakfast. And so if you'd like to tag with us, just let myself know. Um, Sylvia's in the back. I don't know if you could wave. Anybody, everybody probably knows Sylvia. There you go. Who don't know Sylvia? And so you can let her know, and we would meet up at Chessa's for breakfast. We used to do that about once a month. And uh, we haven't been doing that, of course, because of the COVID, but now we're allowed to sit and eat together. We used to do a brunch once a month downstairs. And so maybe as the fall goes on, we might be able to reconsider that depending on where the uh, situation is too with COVID. We worship together. The heavens declare the glory of God. The plants and trees show God's presence. God of our creation, who moves and inspires us through every time and season. Grant to us grace and humility to so order our lives that we may honor you among all peoples and nations. Teach us to see and hear your power in the winds and waves, mountains and valleys, so that we may glorify your goodness to us and live rightly in your creation. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, so that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from Isaiah. How everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 145, the refrain, Lord, you are faithful in all your words. Lord, you are faithful in all your works. Lord, you are faithful in all your words and merciful in all your deeds. You uphold all those who fall and lift up those who are bowed down. Lord, you are faithful in all your words. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. Lord, you are faithful in all your words. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to those who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. Lord, you are faithful in all your words. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and you help them. You preserve all those who love you, but you destroy all the wicked. My mouth shall speak your praise, O Lord. Let all flesh bless your holy name forever and ever. 
Lord, you are faithful in all your words. Our gradual hymn this morning is printed in your insert. Heavenly Father, send thy blessing. with you. Also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry for they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, where do we where do we go, go to get enough bread in the desert to feed such a crowd? Jesus asked them, how many loaves have you? They said, seven and a few small fish. Then ordering the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish. And after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all of them ate and were filled. And they took up the broken pieces left over seven baskets fulls. Those who had eaten were 4,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Um.
Today, 925 million people will go hungry. Now, there's many reasons for this, of course. The world's a complicated place. But climate change is increasing the level of food shortage in the world. The warming atmosphere interferes and causes droughts and floods and heat waves and wildfires that speed up the loss of fertile lands that's used for growing food. Many examples around the world, country of Chad, which has very little to do with increasing climate warming, because of such a country as they are compared to ours, droughts, unpredictable rain, creates very difficult growing conditions for the farmers and farmers there. Another country, Bangladesh, which contributes very little to the global warming, cyclones, storm surges, and flooding have caused a lot of problems for the farming in that country. In Southeast Asia, the rising sea levels are driving people away from small islands in which their families lived for many generations. The coastlines where people lived as well, must recede or move to a new place, leaving their way of life, their food gathering and growing behind in search of a new place to live. Many places around the world have production problems with wheat and rice, the staple of most food, most food consumed around the world. It's kind of the basis that goes with most meals. And here in Canada, we're not immune either. Up north, the melting ice, the tying permafrost, fires, shorter winters, longer summers, presents trouble up north with food gathering. Also, I watched a very small part at the end of the uh, program last night on CBC to deal with uh, global warming. And it's very complicated, but they were saying that the summer ice, when it's present up north, with the heat, grows algae and under, and then every little creature feeds from that, and it hits codfish. And codfish, of course, are one of the primary <coughs> food sources in the North Atlantic for all kinds of larger creatures, the seal, the whales, the polar bear, and of course us. Also, the reducing of the ice, and pretty soon there'll be no summer ice in the north, produces also problems with global warming. 80% of the sun's rays that come down on the ice is reflected into space. But now when there's no ice to reflect that, once again, the ocean, warmers, the ocean warms up. That changes the ocean currents, which affects the currents well down into the Atlantic. And the same thing I can imagine maybe happening in the southern hemisphere as well. And that, of course, affects weather, even inland. There's also, of course, some drought in the prairies. The winter snow, the rains in the summer are not as predictable as they once were. And of course, many places around the world, including our own province of BC, this summer are ravaged by many, many wildfires. Food supplies lessen put stress on people's lives, local community between people. It causes economic problems for countries, leads to conflict and even war. The war in Syria was in part due to trouble with food production. And of course, inequality amongst people, the people who suffer the most, it seems in any situation, are the people towards the bottom of economy. And so, Small countries suffer most, many of which had nothing to do or very little to do with global warming. When difficulties are presented to farmers, or even sometimes impossibilities of growing food for farmers, farmers sometimes give up. A way of life that had been present in some areas of the world for generations, hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, 
as I set aside complete loss of a way of life, culture, language, religion, all is threatened. And so farmers who farm for years are now forced to give up and move to other places to feed their families, and so they leave home in search of a better life. And as people move around, of course, that creates new trouble of large numbers looking for places to live and work. And so refugees become more and more common in our world, added with the conflict that results from these things. Right now, of course, in Central America, we see huge numbers of people leaving their homes through great risk to make their way to a better life in the northern part of the hemisphere. And we notice right now at the U.S. border, many thousands of people try to find their way to a better life. Another way of looking at it is one in nine people today will go to bed hungry tonight. As people of faith, what do we do? As an individual, what can I do? As people of faith, one of the things, of course, we do all the time, and we must continue to do, is to pray. In prayer, we are connected to our God, our Creator. In the Western world, we're trained to look at the land as just real estate, just a commodity. Land is there for our need, to be exploited for our benefit, for our profit. But nowhere in the Bible does it look at land as simply real estate. The world, the earth, is looked at as our mother, our provider, our sustainer, our home. The end of the season of creation, which, which started some weeks ago, ends on October the 4th tomorrow. There's no accident that tomorrow is the celebration of the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. And St. Francis has been known to look at creation as a wonderful blessing of God. Francis also looked at each part of creation as forming a larger living being. He even called in his writings the sun, the moon, the water, the fire, the earth. He called it brothers and sisters that were all living together in relationship one with another. After prayer, of course, we can all do our own small part. How we live, buying in excess or just recycling or a little less shower time or how we just see the earth around us and our place in it. And of course, as individuals, we form families, communities, and the world. Next, we can speak up. It's not easy sometimes to have courage to speak. <clears throat> Mostly since we've been involved with uh, two refugee situations, two people, two family, and then an individual coming into our province. I've heard many good things, and I get many negative comments, so it's all their fault. What's wrong with them? Why did they have to come here? Can't they look after themselves in their own country? But really, it's not that simple. Why would a person or a family leave a home that they've had for generations to come to another country where they don't know the language, they don't know the religion, they don't know anything? They come, of course, because they have to come. Many countries and including our own, contribute towards global warming, which in turn affects farming and food production in especially smaller countries. The truth be told, some of our companies and corporations change the way of life in these small countries. And also, many other things, policies that we do, contribute towards small countries having difficulty. Global warming on top of it, people must leave to find a place to live. And so we're all a part of it. Next, we can reach out. We can help. And here's a service today have been written and produced by the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. It is so good to, to have this group that have worked many years and doing many things locally and around the world to, to help people. Just this past year, they had an initiative for gay ladies around the world who give birth to children, sometimes even in the dark. It's not a developer's home kit which a community can use to solar power to have power during that time. Many things they do, one of which is to help farmers in developing countries, especially with these changing conditions. 
Climate change changes the way people must use and see and farm the land. So the Primates Fund works with farmers to develop new ways of crop growth. They train people in the dangers of pesticides and herbicides and artificial fertilizers to start using once again green ways of doing things, manure, green fertilizers such as compost and biofertilizers. They also train people in the way of water usage. Water one time would just take care of itself and then forests are removed and kind of rainfall is unpredictable. And so he shows people now who to ridge different parts of the hillside and direct water so their water is available in a more reliable way to use on a farm. Also, they take part in a thing called agroforestry, which plants trees and different other plants in the same way so that all may kind of benefit one from another. And so many other things that they do with regards to, to farming, to help people. I just have two examples this morning out of many of the hundreds and thousands they do. One is in Tanzania. There, a lot of people, in particular young women, including pregnant women, have to walk between four and eight kilometers to get water each and every day, taking up much of their daily time and effort. In some cases, that water is not always good. A few years ago, the primate sponsor of a project drilled 25 boreholes benefiting 20 communities so that now people may walk less than a kilometer for safe drinking water. According to the numbers, it's 8,288 households were benefited by those 24 bulk 33,150 members, people, were benefited just by those 25 wells alone. Just amazing. Also, that project worked with over 20,000 small farmers in Tanzania to improve their agricultural practices in a sustainable way. They gave over 16,000 kilograms of seed, 2,200 kilograms of tomato, cabbage, and other particular plants that can grow in different ways. And also there were beneficiaries received of dairy cows and milking goats, chickens, ducks, rabbits and pigs, different animals that you could integrate into a growing farm that things could benefit the people there. <clears throat> also in Uganda, the private fund worked with a group called St. Jude's Family Projects in training community members, in particular with very small farms, could be just a small area of land, a backyard of land, in particular train women who are the ones who most times have to look after a food growing in small families, and in some places there's only women who are left because of conflict, and men are gone away to work, or just have got lost in conflict and war themselves. There's a project they call the Superwoman Program, developing small farms. Right now I'd like to direct you towards the screen again. We're going to have a video from Uganda. <coughs> Still 
Just one example there of not large farming, but individual <laughs> family farming on small land, tree growth, learning to do compost and growing small crops that can be handled or grow in a different environment. Of course, animals that can also be benefiting from that. So just one project of many hundreds that are constant is involved with around the world to help keep people in their own land, in their own homes, and to keep people fed. So if you want to find out more, of course, about the Primates Fund, they have a very developed website. You can get on there and, of course, in our own way, continue to pray, do things in our own light, speak up, speak out, and also support uh, different things such as the Primates for Relief and Development Fund. Dear God, we give you thanks this morning for the Primates for Relief and Development Fund, for the work it does local and around the world, in many of various ways that we may reach out and support one another as people of faith. But also this morning we give thanks for the work of our Farmers Fund to help people with food production. So many times in our own backyard to feed your families and their neighbors. Be with us as we work to work against climate growth, climate warming, but also to help people grow food in their own home. In your sons and now we pray for courage and blessings. Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We now make a statement of our fate as we say together, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Lord Jesus, teacher, provider, this is what you want us to learn, not the world's wisdom, but God's, and so we pray. Awaken us to our need of you in our lives. And you will give us your life. Move us with sorrow for the sorrow of the world. 
Give us the humility to admit our failures. Make us hungry for justice as we work to eradicate hunger for all. And you will give us food at last. Help us to see others through your eyes that our vision will again and again be yours. Show us how to practice what we preach. And we will see good and God in everyone. Support us in standing firm for truth and justice, even when it costs. And the truth will also make us free. Amen. Amen. All creation invites us to join our voices to praise God. Trusting in God's mercy and grace, let us confess our sin to God and to one another. Gracious God, you created us and placed us here to care for all of creation. Forgive us for turning away from you and for neglecting the earth. Raise us up and make us again stewards of your creation, that we may see your presence and all that surrounds us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Hear and receive this good news to all who long to see and encounter Christ. Today's salvation comes to you and the land beneath your feet. Know that you are forgiven and we are free to live in peace with one another and with the earth. You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The peace of our God in Jesus be with us all. Mm. Our offering him six hundred and nineteen. Bless these gifts in our lives, O God, that we may share both food and faith with all people and all creation. With our own hunger, feed the hungry. With our doubt, inspire our faith. 
And with our voice, we join other voices demanding justice here and everywhere, now and always. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God our Creator. It is right in all times and all places to thank and praise you, Creator of all. We praise you at all time all time when the body of the earth is broken again and again. We give thanks for our place in the story of salvation. Our ancestors journeyed with you in creation and migration. They depended on the land, were displaced from the land, and displaced others from the land. They knew you in tents and cities and mountains and by walls and families and in dreams. And through wilderness, prophets who spoke of cedars and listened to ravens. Together with angels and ancestors, we join our voices with all creation in this ancient honor song. O holy, holy, holy God, O God of time and space, all earth and sea and sky above bear witness to your grace. Hosanna in the highest heaven creation sings your praise. And blessed is the one who comes and bears your name always. We give thanks to you for Jesus, whose first bed was a feed trough. He was baptized in the Jordan, tested in the wilderness. He traveled in fishing boats and told parables of farmers and seeds, labor and wages, yeast and bread. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread food of the poor, the work of the field, and heart. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, fruit of the earth, gave thanks, and gave it to his friends, saying, this is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, and awaiting his coming kingdom, we offer you this bread and this cup. Creator, send your spirit on these gifts, so that we may know Jesus in them, and are gathered together with everyone who shares this sacred meal of justice and community. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that we may strive for justice and peace, respect the dignity of every human being, and safeguard the integrity of creation. Bring with us all your saints to your commonwealth of sorrow and li a sparrow and lily, child and beggar, which is both now and yet to come. All honor and glory are yours, Creator, Christ and Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today Christ meets us at the table. Today. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
may stand as we pray. Help us to trust in you and to share what we have with a hungry world. With all creatures, we look to you for our food in due season. May we who do our part in restoring the balance of your creation and deepen our commitment to follow Jesus in ministries that feed and serve others. Amen. Our worship leads to the world. A world of ethnic groups, First Nations, and other indigenous peoples all nations, their citizen leaders, that the hungry will be fed and that refugees will return home in safety and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, be with the privileged and the poor today and every day, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, 422.